Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today, at last, we have the SJRC F11. I don't normally show you the boxes, but I wanted to show you this box because it's a nice box. Uh, thanks very much to Banggood for your appalling wrapping. So inside we have the drone. You can see it's really nicely boxed. So in here you've got the controller, the drone itself, and under here you have a second layer, and there you have your instruction manuals in there. It's a small instruction manual, a little box. Spare set of props, a full set, and your USB cable for charging the transmitter and the drone. So, let's put that to one side. I just wanted to show you the box because it is a nice box. Let's take them off. So, this is the drone. You've probably seen loads of the thing. I had a trailer video for this ages ago, months ago, and it's took forever to come. So, here's the folding drone. It folds very similar to the Xeno, in fact. It does fold really nice. Them arms are really nice. And if you look inside, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's metal-based washers inside. So as you're doing it, it's on steel, and it actually locks really, really nicely into place. So there you have the drone. <coughs> now, underneath the drone, looks like it's got two optical flows. But it, there's no optical flow on this drone, not that I can see anyway. They're just dummies. Now, I do believe that the pro version of this, or I don't know if it's out yet, but I believe it's coming out, and I presume they're going to have op it's going to have optical flow on it. So, I have hovered this, that's all I've done with it, I've hovered it, and I can tell you it's extremely stable in the hover. I was very surprised how stable it was. So, let's have a quick look at the drone. You've got Bushless motors, you've got props similar to what you've got on the Xeno actually, very similar to the Xeno, and they unscrew with two screws, so there's a screw there, screw there, they come off and a one unit. So, although they are single bladed props, they actually come as a pair and they ha you have to replace them as one. You've got 1080p camera on the front that's driven by the remote controller. And you can see, and it is 5G, so you do need a 5G capable phone. You've got the charger for the battery on this side, and on the other side you have your micro SD card slot. Now, well I remember, I've had a lot of trouble trying to get this thing to record to the micro SD card. So you might have to mess, it will not read a high, it won't read like a 64 gig card, I tried 64 gig, won't even see it. And I've had to mess around until I found a card to run on. So at the minute, it has a 16 gig card in there and it seems fine with it. But I did have to mess around with it a lot. So a little bit of a downside on that, a little bit of a negative. But now I've got it, it seems fine. So the battery clips in the top. And it is a 2500 11.1 .1 volt. So it's a 3S. Now this is the only big downside I've got with this, the, the charging USB, that, now that seems to be the way everything's going yet, but this thing takes a good four and a half hours to charge, so be warned that it takes a long time to charge. You can charge it quicker, I've, I only charged it with a standard charger, a uh, standard wall charger. If you, if you get a two and a half amp one, you can charge it a lot quicker obviously, but I just did it with that way. So. That's your battery, as you can see. Contacts on the top. And it just clips it really nicely into there. It's a really nice fit actually. Got legs at the front. Very Mavic-esque. And then it sits on these two rubbers at the back. Very, very looks like a Mavic. Underneath is, it's plastic and there's some metal in it but not very much, but it is nicely made. It is a quality piece of kit. I, w I was surprised how good the quality was. I expected it maybe to be a bit more toy gradish, but it really is nice. Now the only other thing that I think is, you can see the top there, then scratches. That's when you fold it, these blades are hitting the battery and it's just scratching it. It's a minor little thing, but they could have maybe done a little bit better. This is the controller. So the controller looks amazing. But it does feel a little bit cheap in your hand and 
if you can hear that. Probably can't, but it's it's a bit clicky. Um, and there's not a lot of movement on the sticks. So the throw on the sticks is quite short. It's got what I believe are real antennas, and they clip the same way they do on a Mavic, so they lock in place. And on the top of here you have, you see that, you have a camera button, and on this side you have a speed adjustment. So you could adjust your speed, see if you get that in shocked. Struggling to focus on it to be honest. Um, on this side you've got your camera up and down, and your video button. Auto take off and land, headless mode, return to home, and the power for the transmitter. And then under here is your phone holder. Now, that's as high as that goes. I can, I'll can i show you where I put my phone in. I've got a 7, uh, an iPhone 7 Plus with a slim case on and it only just fits. But it does fit, so I'm not really complaining about that. And then under here you have these two pull down. Uh, like an Altel Evo, I suppose, so you can hold it. And it does feel nice in your hand. It's a nice shape. I like the Evo controller because of that. The controller, it does feel a little bit cheap. It looks better than it feels in your hand. It weighs nothing because it's only got a little, uh, I think it's a 350 milliamp hour 1S battery in here. So you don't get long, but it does charge ridiculously fast. I think it charges in 35 minutes, so. It's still decent. So that's the controller. And this is the drill. So, let's start it up and I'll show you and we'll connect the app up. So, single press on the top, power the drone on. So, you can see you've got flashing red lights. Now, if I, because I fly mode one, normally you just press the power button, but if I hold this, if I hold the camera button in and turn it on, I get two beeps and it will put it into mode one. So I get mode 1 to fly in, which I prefer, and then obviously up and down on the throttle, because this side now you throttle, and there you go, it's bound. So let me just show you the camera. So that's the camera going up and down, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so it's got really annoying beep, and it really is annoying. That annoying beep gets worse because when you hit the record button on the transmitter so if you hit record on the transmitter it'll record to the SD card if you hit record on the app you don't get the horrible beeping noise all the time but what you do get is recording to the phone not the SD card so if I hit the record button I'll show you what I mean and it'll do that when it's recording it's to let you know it's recording but <laughs> it is slightly annoying if you want to take off and you don't want to fly it in GPS mode, you hold that button in till it beeps and now you're out of GPS and you're in altitude hold mode and the little light on your transmitter has gone out and if you can see there, hold it back in again, you're back into GPS mode. But I've got no GPS lock here obviously because I'm inside. So let me show you the app. So the app is SJ GPS Pro. Let me see if I can get you that. SJ GPS Pro. You can probably see it there. So obviously you need to go into your Wi-Fi settings and find your Wi-Fi. And then you, what you're looking for is I can't remember what it is now. Yeah, SJ GPS Pro. Click on that. Come out of there, and then we'll go into the app. So this is the app. I quite like the app actually. It's not it's not spectacular but it does its job. The glare in here is horrendous. So let me just go down here. Change it change it to F11 GPS. There you go. Change that to F11 GPS and hit controls. And after a couple of seconds, you're in. So as you can see. Not bad on the lag either. As I say, I've only hovered this, but when I was outside hovering it, I turned it around a few times and didn't seem to have any lag noticeable anyway, so really nice. The picture on the screen's decent. Well, in fact, it's very nice. The image is nice. So, on your controller, you have various settings. You've got your camera functions down here, 
and then here you've got your other functions take off and land return to home and then if you click that one you've got follow me etc and all the other modes at the top I'll go through the app more with you when we do the flight test on this uh, that button there will click you into your map and it does work that seems great if on my phone it seems to work I don't need to download the map as long as I had a, G, um, a 4G signal and then if I click out of that back into the app here's where it stores your photos and videos now I've got a video on it. Let me show you what it looks like. Now this video was just with a, in my hand. I know it's not a proper thing because I've got it on my phone. But that's with the drone in my hand recorded to the phone. So as you can see the camera doesn't look bad at all. It's going to be what it flies like when it's, on, when it's flying. I've no doubt the drone's going to fly well. It's whether the camera's stable enough on the drone. It's got no stability. It's got no... Gim no um, three axis or two axis gimbal, but that's going to be its telltale test. I've seen the Z5 camera; and it doesn't look bad at all. So I know this isn't a true test, but I just thought I'd show you. And then if we come back out of there, you're back into your app. You've got VR if you want to play it with your goggles on, obviously. And then you've got on here you have gesture mode. So. You can do that so you can have gesture mode to control the camera and then on here you have some quite basic settings to be honest with much. You've got beginner mode, you got your flight distance, your flight altitude and your return altitude. So I suppose the important ones are on there but there's no different camera settings or anything like that. Down at the bottom you've got your height, your depth, your vertical speed and your horizontal speed. And there you've got your controller battery and your craft battery. So, all in all, the app's quite nice actually, it's not nothing special, but it seems to do its job. Like I say, I've not flown it. But for what I paid for this, so I paid one two two fifty, I think it was, £122.50, I bought it from Banggood, hence the disgustingly packaged pocket box, because they didn't put in a black bag around, the box is apparently adequate, normally they come with some foam around them, this didn't. Um, and that's what I paid for it. It came, this... As you see in the prelude thing, it must have been three or four months ago. This thing's been on order, then I had it on order, then I cancelled my order, then I put it on order again, then they cancelled my order. Then it came back out again, and he eventually just bought it when it came into when it first came back into stock. So I ordered it the day it did. So this is the drone. I'm going to have the flight footage up in a few days, but I just wanted to give you an overview. So far, from what I can see, I'm very impressed with it. It's certainly so much better quality than the Bayang Toys one I did and the quality of this is actually something you did more to expect on a much more expensive drone for the quality of build and everything god knows what it'd be like in a crash i'm not saying it it'd take impact very well but it's just really nicely finished off there's a fair bit of weight about it it's a fair decent size it's about similar size to the xeno maybe a bit smaller um but yeah it looks decent for a cheap i suppose it's still is a toy grade drone it's decent. The controller, as I say, doesn't feel the best in your hand, but it does look fantastic. So, thanks very much for watching. I'll have the flight video up shortly, but I just wanted to give you this overview. Hope you enjoy my channel. If you are, please think about subscribing. Please hit the like button and hit that notification bell. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye.